Hi everyone, this is Giselle Hamilton, equine naturopath and founder of Sacred Horse. And today what I'm going to be sharing with you are my thoughts on training aids for horses. And I'm going to be sharing my thoughts with you from a biomechanical perspective and also from a psychological perspective. The reason I want to talk about this today is because it is a topic that comes up all the time. Um, when I'm dealing with clients, particularly when I'm doing the equine myofunctional therapy work, which is a type of body work or massage. There seems to be a lot of very strong opinion of, out there about training aids, either as being inherently good or inherently bad. Um, so whichever sort of camp you're in, I want you to try and keep a bit of an open mind um, while we sort of think and talk around this topic, because like I said, um, I've had exposure to a lot of different people with a lot of different horses and a lot of different training methodologies um, in terms of how things work well and how things don't work so well. Um, so I suppose my perspective on this is very much about it's not necessarily the training aid but it's about the person who's using it. So it's about what is the individual's level of skill? Do they actually know how to use the training aid? Or have they purchased a training aid because someone has recommended it but they don't actually know how to use it? Um, it is very much about the user and not the aid usually. There are some aids out in the market which probably I would say are inherently cruel. So bits with those nasty um, twists in them and barbs and all sorts of horrible things, they are inherently cruel. They're doing damage to the horse's mouth which can be quite permanent and they're also psychologically scarring the horse. So an aid like that, you know, there's really very little discussion around it. It is harsh, it does damage, hence it is cruel. But then there are other training aids which again they are about how you use it. So I'm going to give an example and that would be for say a dressage whip. Now I have seen whips used plenty of times very cruelly. I've seen um, children's shows, uh, riding shows, where a pony is refusing to go over a jump and the parents are screaming at the child from the sidelines to crack the horse a good one. Now that's not the intention of a whip. That is cruel. That is about poor education for the child um, and it's about using a tool as a blunt instrument. So in that case, whips are certainly cruel. I've had other clients say that they don't like to use a whip, which is fine, you don't have to. Um, but their opinion is very much that it confuses the horse. If you don't know how to use a whip, certainly it does confuse the horse. I've also seen um, classical dressage trainers use whip as an extension of the arm. And an example of this is they use the whip by just gently touching the horse on the top of their rump to ask them to drop their hindquarters and in doing so the horse stops. So they're actually asking the horse to stop without using the bit really. So all of a sudden the use of the whip is kinder than not using the whip because they're not having to exert pressure on that horse's mouth to ask them to stop. So it's about education and it's very much about perspective. The people who don't know how to use a whip properly, the people who use them to just crack a horse to make them go forward not using the tool properly, don't know what they're doing. That class classical dressage master who knows that just touching the horse on the rump will uh, teach them to stop because they drop their hindquarters, that's very kind use of a riding tool or a training aid, okay? Another perspective or another tool that is um, used really well and really poorly would be a shambon. Now a shambon, if you don't know what it is, um, is a tool which encourages the horse to lengthen and lower. So it's aiming for um, a low and um, low and long position. Um, this is different to roll care, which is low, deep and round. It's, it's just asking the horse to stretch out um, like you would at the end of a dressage test where you're working the horse on a loose rein. Um, but you're getting the horse to do it in all of its paces, in walk and trot and canter. Um, now I see plenty of people use these not knowing how to use them and that's when it gets cruel because they're getting a horse which doesn't know how to use a shambon. They're getting a horse that potentially doesn't know how to respond to pressure through the pole and they're instantly asking them for this long and low position. 
the horse isn't strong enough, the horse isn't balanced enough. You then get horses that are rearing, that are going over backwards. So this training aid is suddenly cruel and people see this and they go, well, this is not appropriate, this is cruel. Um, again, a master horse person who knows what they're doing will use the chambon on a horse who is yet to be ridden. And what they do is all they ask initially is for the horse to not run around like a llama with its head up in the air. There's enough pressure on there for the horse to pop around with its head um, sort of just at, with a height. And they do that until the horse is comfortable. Then they ask for the horse to lower its head a bit more so that its nose is aligned with its chest. And then over time they gradually ask for the horse to go lower and lower and lower until they're moving around with the head in a long and low position. There's no stress on the horse when this is happening because it's being done in a kind and gentle way. And what it's actually doing is it's teaching the horse to use its suspensory ligament system before anyone gets on the horse. It's developing the nuchal ligament um, and all the suspensory ligaments and muscles through the back so that when a rider gets on the horse, they've already got the strength to carry themselves properly. It's actually treating, um, training them in this way is kinder to the horse biomechanically than not doing it. Because if you're getting on a horse who is green and they aren't engaging through the back, they've got their head up in the air, they've got their legs trailing behind, all of a sudden you're doing damage to that horse's back. So I have a think about that. This is a training aid that can go very, very wrong in the wrong hands and it can be a beautiful kind of way of training a horse in the right hands. So what I would say is this, if there is a training aid that you're interested in using, go to a riding master, learn to use it properly. Now, have a look around at who these instructors are. Are they training the horse kindly? Can you see horses that are relaxed and happy and that things are being done in a gradual way so the horse understands what's being asked of it? Or is this a person who is forcing the horse, stressing the horse, putting huge amounts of pressure on the horse? That's not a master of horse training. That is someone who's a bit rough. Okay, so have a look around. Find some really good training masters out there. Um, I know locally some very good training masters and I have a friend who also knows some very good training masters over in Europe and in the US. So if you're interested in knowing who those training masters are, by all means reach out to me. Um, let me know where you live and I will find out um, who some of those training masters are or provide that information to you. Um, but I think it's really very much about let's stop being judgmental about each other and the training methods that we use um, and let's stop looking at something and putting a blanket rule over it and saying, well, this is kind or this is cruel because it's case by case. Every person is different. Every person's skill level is different. You just need to keep an open mind. Um, I've seen some horses that are beautiful from a biomechanical perspective and they're not stressed and they've had training aids used. I've seen the same for horses who never have training aids used. And then on the other perspective, I've seen horses that have biomechan biomechanical damage and huge amounts of stress and they've been trained at liberty or um, they have been trained using training aids. So it's very much about the user and their level of experience. Okay, that's all for today. I hope it's given you some food for thought. You're very much welcome to share your thoughts in the comments section um, and I will be back um, at another point in the future with more videos for you. Thank you. This has been Giselle Hamilton from Sacred Horse.